guests who are here. It's great to have you worshiping with us. So just a moment while we get our other PowerPoint going. Um, let's see, what can I tell you? Uh, Marion and I are, and the kids, we're off after service uh, today. We're going to go for a two-week extravaganza for the prairies to enjoy the mosquitoes. <laughs> so um, we'll be gone for a bit, but we, we will be back for the service on the 25th out at the, uh, the Dover's Tea Farm. Oh, good to see you guys there. All right, so let's stand this morning for our opening hymn, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer. Thank you. 
and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God and true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down in your anger, and give no opportunity to the future level. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, to a modest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the opinion, that it may give grace to those who hear it. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, from whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgives you. Therefore, be imitators of God and follow the children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The children may come forward a little bit more, I guess, to listen. And the congregation stands are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel of bring to St. John the Sixth. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet do not believe. All the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in Him shall have, should have, eternal life. And I will raise Him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about Him because He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Congregation may be seated. Good morning. Good morning, baby. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. You have everything you need? 
Yes, mostly. You're wondering why I'm asking you that. Well, you know, sometimes you ever think that you need something so bad that your parents just won't give it to you? You ever had that happen? Yeah. Yeah. I know that Lydia really likes, really likes to watch Bluey. Do you know that show? Yes. Yeah. And sometimes she just gets in her head that she needs to watch it. So she says, Bluey, 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 Bluey. And it seems like she's going to just die if she doesn't get Bluey. Isn't that silly? <laughs> but you know what? As parents, we say, no, not now, Lydia. And we go, hmm, she hasn't had lunch yet. That's why she's so desperate. So we make her something eat, and then she feels better again. Or maybe she's asking for it so bad, and we realize, oh, she missed her nap today. Let's put her down for a nap. And then she feels better. So sometimes you guys think that you just need something so bad, but it's actually not that thing that you need. It's actually something else. Jesus. Well, of course we need Jesus. You know that Jesus does that for not just for kids, but for adults too? He knows what we actually need. Not what we always want. And at the right time, he gives it to us. Isn't that special? Chocolate. 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 Some, yes, sometimes he gives us what we want to. But you know what's really cool? Did you listen to that reading I just did from the lectern up there? Jesus was saying he is what?
live forever. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Oh, guys. Oh, yeah. let's stand together now and let's practice telling our faith. Look at the new pastor. <laughs> Not quite yet. Okay, the congregation can stand too as we confess our faith in the words of the apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered from the Holy Spirit, and was crucified by the Spirit. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit.
remember hearing last week? Depends where you were, that's right. Down from here. What did PT preach on last week? Does anybody remember? The church and its calling and the school tape letters. The church is calling and the screw tape letters. Yeah, that's kind of what I heard too. <laughs> yeah, right on. Anything else from the message last week? Nothing happens. And they pray and they pray and they pray. 
to their gods. And there's nothing. The sacrifice just sits there. They begin to start cutting themselves with spears and swords and bleeding out to, as a way to get this God's attention. They cry out for hours on end. They start dancing in circles around the sacrifice and nothing happens. So Elijah, he starts up with his righteous trash talk. And he says, oh, maybe he's just busy. Maybe he's, you know, on the potty or something. He's got something else going on. Maybe a little water. He might be asleep. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's just too busy to hear the cries of, their, of their, his desperate followers. begs God 
God to just let him die. Elijah very quickly goes from the mountaintop to the faith. Relatable story. This point in. Have you ever had those mountaintop experiences with God? A church retreat, maybe? Newly baptized? Maybe you finally get the sweetness of the message of the gospel of what God has done for you. A time where you, you're seeing God's mighty power like Elijah did it. And you're thanking him, praising his name. But maybe you too, like Elijah, have gone from this state to powering over the latest or hard reality of Maybe you too have struggled with the counter. You pray to God. You beg that you would just let you die. Can't handle it anymore. You don't see a way around it for fruit. You look at Elijah, it seems kind of pathetic. When you look at your own heart, the things you go through, it's pretty relatable, isn't it? We regularly profess that God's power is unmatched. It's unyielding. He's risen in glory by his resurrection. We too will be lifted from the grave and given the dawn of new life. But then, like a storm on the horizon, the diagnosis fits. Darkness descends and we find ourselves pleading with God. Enough, Lord. I can't take any more. Here's where God steps in again. With Elijah, he takes him from that sorry state and sends a messenger, an angel, to wake him up. Tell him that the journey is too great for him, and that he must get up to eat the miraculous bread and water. After the second time, Elijah finally does wake up, and he does these pulls. And he's carried on this miraculous food for 40 days, until he finally reaches Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There he has an encounter with God and speaks with him. Us too, like Elijah, when the crushing weight of sin and sorrow presses in on every side, Christ calls us to his table, where we are nourished by his very body and blood, the divine sustenance that empowers us to endure the trials of this world. As we traverse the trial and tribulations of this life, his precious body and blood fortify our weary souls. Foretaste of the feast to come. Where we will meet our Maker, speak with him as a friend, and behold his glory unveiled. As we journey through life, highs and lows, God's work is done in our lives. He blesses us and uses us to work as good to those in need around us. Like he used Elijah from that point on. Now speaking of God working his good through us, Ephesians, that second reading we have, it's a pretty complete guide on Christian living. And it begins with a very important assumption, a very important truth. You are God's. You have been forgiven and reborn of water and of the Spirit. The assumption is that you are one with Christ's body and one with each other in the church. So Paul encourages. He says, since you are this, act 
like it. He goes on to list these pretty basic things, but important things. He says, speak truth. Do not sin in your anger. Don't be a thief, but instead work hard to share. You speak only things that build up, and never the things that knock down. And do not fight the Holy Spirit working good things for you. After all, you were sealed by him for eternal life in the waters of your baptism. Now, this reading in Ephesians, it's not a list of do this and then you will be saved. And it's not a test of who's a true Christian and who's not. No, this text is simply laying out how we live as those who are saved through Christ. Not by our work, but by Christ's work on the cross for us. St. Paul encourages us to shed the tattered rags of our fellow life and clothe ourselves in the radiant garments of Christ's righteousness. For do this daily and live like Christ himself. Finally, we get to our John 6 and we didn't continue from last week. What you need to know here is first, how Jesus says any of us believe and are saved. Anybody catch that? It says, the Father draws them. God's word. To him be the credit. Salvation, it's not a decision that we can make. And we can be prideful about it, pull over people's heads saying, I've made a decision for Jesus, and that's why I'm better than you. You should make a decision too, it's the same by me. No, we can do nothing unless the Father draws us and brings us to Jesus. The gift. What a relief that we are saved because of God's action outside of our own dumb ones. We're saved by Christ whether we feel like we're saved or not. It's an objective reality. Christ has died for you. You have been drawn, heard his word, received his merciful gifts. All whom the Father has drawn to his Son are sealed with a promise. A promise unbreakable, a promise eternal. On the last day they will rise, not to darkness, but to the everlasting light of life. And finally, Jesus reiterates that he is the bread of life. He is the bread that came down from heaven. He's the sacrifice of God that has been given for the sins of the whole world, and his flesh, the flesh of the sacrifice, has been truly given for us to eat. In his blood, or in his body, and drink in his blood, and the mysterious sacrament of the Lord's Supper. The one that Jesus himself instituted and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. In case that wasn't clear enough, Christians continue to practice the Lord's Supper after his resurrection with the understanding that it was his true body and blood in and with the bread and wine. Jesus says it. We believe it. Even if our senses don't quite comprehend it. At his table, we feast again and again on the very bread of heaven. The life-giving manna that nourishes our souls for the journey. It's a good thing we eat and drink often too. You ever feel like Elijah going through life, suffering hardship, poor decision, tax from others, or even deep struggles of mental health and just wanting to die? Because the food that he gives is 
body and blood, it's to sustain us through the long journey that's ahead. To give us strength to live our lives for others and be living examples of Christ's goodness. Each step on our pilgrimage, he's our strength, guiding us through every valley and over every peak. Till we at last stand on the mountain of God, face to face with His glory, and reunited with all those who have been joined with Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. May this peace from God, which surpasses all understanding, may keep and guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We continue by receiving our offering. We sing our offering hymn, Almighty Father, bless the Lord. Of the word 
placing in their mouths no corrupting word, but only that which is good and builds up and is fitting, that grace may come to all who hear them. Let us pray to the Lord. For our Prime Minister and Parliament, for our Premier and Legislative Assembly and judges, and for all entrusted with public health and safety, that they be strengthened and upheld in every good deed, and that God would hinder all in our common life that grieves Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, mercy. For those who walk through difficult and dark times, sick, the lonely, the grieving, the injured, the persecuted, Especially, we bring before our Lord the, the uh, family of Randell. For Scott, Randell, Lovely, Scotia, and her dad, Randall, at her mom's passing. Father, we pray for your peace and your healing. Father, we pray for Jessica's mom, that you continue to sustain her. As she goes through her cancer treatment, give her peace. Father, we pray too for the Andersons and healing for the doctors and medication for Liam. Father, we pray for all those who struggle with cancer. We pray that you bring healing and provide their daily bread. Father, we pray for all those who grieve the loss of love. We pray them peace. And may the Grief Share program provide time for healing and rest in our God. We pray for those who have undergone successful surgeries, especially birth. We pray that their pure healing would continue. We pray for the team who has had us at and the people of the Hadassah, that they would be blessed by the work and the mission uh, of spreading the word good for the people who need to continue to hear and be built up in your peace. We pray for Matthew and Michelle, Cindy Stewart's daughter, as they in their new married life, as they were joined together yesterday. She blessed them in. Father, we pray for Wendy with intestinal infection and needs to leave home. Father, we pray that you provide for her. We pray for you. Father, that all of these, that they may know the peace of Christ's promise, that whoever comes to him will never be cast out, and that all who look to him and believe will have eternal life and be raised up at the last day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, without mercy. We pray for all those who travel. For Pastor Tom and Wendy Lee as they travel to Victoria this morning. And for Pastor Tom as he instructs at Camp Homewood in the coming weeks. We pray that you bless the seeds that he sows to those young kids of your gospel lesson. We pray that you keep the Tim family safe as we head east. Bring us safely back home here once more. And for all of us who travel, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord and others. For all those preparing for adult confirmation next month, we pray that you give them deeper understanding, the strengthening of their faith, and a time to share and grow with one another in this family. Let us pray for the Lord. Hey. Lord, have mercy. For the faithful departed, offering to Christ the bread of life, all thanks and praise, and asking him to bring us to see with him, with them in his glorious light, the fulfillment of his promise. Whoever believes has eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord the Lord in your favor give you peace. Sing our clothing hymn, praise my soul, the King of Heaven. You can sing it.
Wednesday for our exploration of Cortez. Because the ferry is such an issue, we want to limit the number of vehicles. So that's why we limited the number of people. We're going to cram as many people as we can into as few number of vehicles as possible. Uh, I'll send out information on all the details. The important thing is we're going to meet here at 8.30 Wednesday morning. 8.30 Wednesday. All right, uh, birthdays this week and anniversaries. It's dear birthday anniversary. Happy anniversary, you two. How many years is it? 62. 62. <laughs> All right, and on Tuesday we have dear celebrating birthday and Bill and Irene celebrating an anniversary. <laughs> How many years for you two? 58. 58. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Later this week, we have Jamie Anderson and Josh Wagner. All right. I think for those present, the anniversary is outnumbered. So let's do the happy anniversary uh, first for our, our song today. Happy anniversary to you. May God bless you always. May He guide you and keep you forever. We pray. Sins are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks. Jesus.